Because we have to do uh, East as we head into uh, the end of the Steel Valley Conference preview, and, and we talk about the East Bears. Uh, like Taney, a rejuvenated program that, that a lot of people are just excited to be back. Uh, what do they have returning, and what do their schedule uh, look like? I'm looking for East to make a big improvement from last year. And I think last year it was, it was hard. And it, we got to remember too, Cheney and East, like you said, these are newer programs too, that were coming up through COVID too, that was throwing a curveball to everyone. But these newer programs that are starting up, it's really hard to get a program started up when you have this kind of cu- curveball thrown in uh, into uh, the mix. But some players that they lost offensively, they lost knowledge, Matlock and offensive linemen. And then on defense, they lost a lot of big linemen, uh, Vincent Steele, Sean Kane, Anthony West, all defensive linemen, as well as Jamez Brooks, outside linebacker. But returning, they got some. They got some pretty uh, interesting players that are going to be returning. Uh, Dejuan Waller, a senior wide receiver. Dwayne Irby uh, is a junior offensive lineman, and then on defense, uh, Javion Smith, a defensive back, senior. And then th- this is the tandem that I want you to watch. Davion Smith, the defensive back, the senior defensive back for them. And then Tim Davis, a cornerback, free safety senior for them. It's going to be part of this really good rejuvenated secondary that oh, East is going to be bringing this year. And it's going to give pass uh, passes, passing offenses a, a fit, I think. And they're, they're definitely going to contain the, uh, the passing offenses a little bit better than the, what we saw last year. I'm really just looking. This is really just a good improvement step because there's really nowhere for uh, for East to go back but they have all the momentum going forward now they have everything bright future ahead of them now they got their program pieces in place they got another year under their belt um I think they got some pieces here that they could build around and uh have guys learn under and start building this successful program as we've been programming teams around the area we've been saying oh this is a young secondary this is a young well not with east my word is east experienced and they they are uh, senior led, and they're going to have secondary that I guarantee will not be making the the freshman sophomore secondary mistakes where kids get lost in coverage or 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 where communication breaks down. These guys, uh, if you're going to beat their secondary, you're going to just have to win one on one battles straight up. They're not going to have breakdowns in coverage. No, absolutely not. And that tandem of Javion Smith and Tim Davis, I mean, both versatile in the secondary, but just play very good coverage too. And I mean, they're going to be the guys that you're going to be looking up to pit, break up pass coverages, maybe get a pick or two, create some turnovers that might lead to a, an East win here or there. Let me tell you, some of the knocks on the secondary players, oh, they don't like to tackle, not these two. They will no. hit you and they will hit you hard, put you on the ground, step over you and say, come come back in this kitchen and you'll you'll see what happens next time. And it might be a, a smart idea, too, to bring that physicality more on the secondary with all the defensive linemen that they lost going in to this year. I mean, yeah, East has a lot of defensive linemen that they could replace with that and that they've had underneath these guys for years. But, I mean, you got the seniors now that are going to be in the secondary now and not on the line. Maybe that physicality and that toughness needs to come from the secondary and work its way forward through the defensive line because that's where your leaders are is in the backfield, the de- defensive backfield. Absolutely. Yes, I think so. I think when when you look at their emotional leaders and their their uh, statistical leaders, they're both going to come from the secondary. And Scotty, going to bring you into this conversation. Uh, when you talk about leaders who are usually on a defense being the the linebackers or the the defensive linemen, you have your leaders in the secondary. What kind of different schemes do you think that brings to a football team in general, whether it be East or or, or anybody? Uh, yeah, I, I think a lot, um, and, and Todd was talking about how East has, has lost some guys on the, on the defensive line. So maybe having, having to rely more heavily on the secondary, if they, they have more experience there, it, it could be beneficial. I, I think a lot. D- depends on um, the the versatility you you have in, in the secondary. I think there's times where you you want to play tight and right up on the receivers, but then that means there's there's a risk you could be 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 beat deep by a wide receiver, and then when you you play. Uh, too soft, you you give up the the quick routes underneath where they could just gash you. So 
you you have to find a good balance. But I, I think a, a versatile secondary now, especially when you you see guys that aren't the biggest guys having success and you know really putting a stamp on on defense i mean to me it's it's almost it's not as crucial or as big as having an elite pass rusher i think that's uh the most important position besides quarterback but on the other hand, you have guys that could cover. If they could cover those extra few seconds, you you don't have to rely on as much getting pressure, and maybe you could just rush for and play back instead of blitzing and you know taking that risk and, and blitzing the house. So you want to have as much versatility as possible but we we've seen now you you don't really have to be uh, a huge guy this big physical specimen as long as you have some speed and you have good football acumen good iq you can get the job done ty ty let's talk about east scheduling and some of the teams are gonna have to face and what are the games that you have circled for for the golden bears Ty, you got to unmute yourself, bud. <laughs> oh, that's what that was. <laughs> Every time, right? <laughs> no, let's, let's run through their schedule real quick. All right, take two on this. So August 20th, they're home versus Shaw, 27th at Warren Harding. September 3rd, they're at Niles. September 10th versus Ellett at home. 17th at Boardman, 24th at Mooney. October 1st at Howland, 8th at Campfield, 16th home versus Ursuline, 22nd home versus Cheney. Uh, the two games that I personally circled here for the Golden Bears that I think are going to be uh, big games for them are going to be both that Niles game September 3rd and that 22nd game against Cheney October 22nd. The Niles game September 3rd at Niles, I think Cheney has a decent chance at going in there and upsetting Niles if Niles is not ready with them trying to figure out that new quarterback situation okay. over there. Yeah. I think Cheney focused in on this year the size that they have they can give Niles some fits you mean east right we're talking east east yeah i'm sorry east i, <laughs> I apologize east we were just talking to cheney yeah i was thinking but no yeah with east yeah i was thinking about the cheney game too that they they have at the end yeah east though east with um with niles i think with the way that east has their their size and that secondary that they have a new quarterback being inserted into that with that experienced secondary i think it's going to give niles some fits it's a very good point. I mean, that secondary can give whoever Niles puts behind their their center some some different looks and some some uh, some opportunities to really have to to think. And you never want your quarterback to think too much. You just want them to be able to react, react, react. So uh, East uh, very experienced secondary might give some new quarterbacks some fits. Yeah, absolutely. And then that last game too with East versus Cheney. This could be a big game for, for either team here. I mean, Cheney well, and East are both those teams that can take that next step, and it might be a huge game. Playoff implications might be on the line, too, this last game of the season. And we just have to say how happy we are that that matchup is back on the schedule and that, that we're able to talk about uh, Cheney versus East and so many of the matchups that the Steel Valley Conference has back that uh, so many fans around the area that are nostalgic like to see back on the docket. Yeah, and I mean, you can't highlight uh, the East schedule without highlighting Cheney versus East being that last game of the season and being back. Uh, beautiful to see that, that that it's back, and hopefully, if it turns out as everything plans for both programs, they're going to be competing for something that last game of the season, and that's why I, uh, I have that one circled because I, I believe both these programs are going to take a step. We'll see how big of a step they take this year, uh, but if it's a big enough step, this game could be very important come the end of the season. So that concludes our Steel Valley Conference football preview.